Hello Internet, welcome back to Cataclysm, the tutorial playthrough. And we're about to engage in our very first uh, bout of combat, and we're going to talk about combat. Now there's three main ways. First we're going to wait for this enemy to come into range. We do this by pressing either the 5 key or the period key. Both of these will pass a single turn. So if we press 5, uh, he did not move this turn, but if we press it again... Oh, he's attacking the fence, because he is a dumb zombie. Uh, and he doesn't really understand that we're food and offense is not. Sometimes this will happen. This has been greatly reduced. Used to be they would smash the ground like all the time. But if we continue waiting, he will make his way over here. In general, it is better to wait for enemies to come to you than it is to approach them. So if we had gone up to meet him, this could have potentially exposed us to even more enemies. Now the real concern here, which is what I'm seeing right now is that these zombies will transition down here and we will end up fighting all of them. This feral runner has already spotted us. Again, we can see this with the exclamation point by his head on this particular tile set. Not every tile set has that indicator. Alternatively, we can look in this menu and you'll see they have a yellow exclamation point next to their name, which means they have spotted us. We can also see their health. They've both taken damage by traversing this barbed wire fence, which is in our benefit. Um, but we need to be careful because there are four enemies here. And if they all come at us at once, we could have a problem. This is something important to note about combat. Combat should always, always, you should know where you're going to retreat to. Always, always is very important. We have not cleared this house. So for all we know, this is packed with zombies. Normally, I would retreat indoors so that they couldn't see me and I would only have to fight maybe one at a time. Because we have not cleared this, I am not comfortable diving into this house we would in an emergency if all of a sudden six zombies came around the corner here i would dart into the house and go out the front and try to get them lost in the house while we made our escape but for the most part you do not want to go into an unknown location like because let's say those zombies start coming down here and we start sprinting and we sprint into the house we're burning stamina and we get in the house and there's three zombies we can't stop here we have to continue sprinting until we get a little distance, we'll have to go out the front door, and by then our stamina might be all gone, and we could be in a very dangerous predicament trying to retreat while we have no stamina. So unfortunately, the only place we know is clear is directly behind us back at the evac shelter. This is a little far, but if we had to, we could run all the way back to base, turn off sprinting, go inside, hide downstairs, and let our NPC fight the zombies. Uh, is probably our most viable uh, retreat route. So keeping that in mind, if we start to get in a dangerous predicament, we're going to head back to base. Always, always, always know where you're going to retreat to. If you don't have anywhere to retreat to, it's very easy to lose your stamina and get killed. And again, stamina, very, very important when engaging in melee combat. In fact, I would argue it's the most important thing. Obviously, dying and losing health is, is very important as well, but stamina will ultimately lead to your death if you run out of stamina and don't manage it properly. So we're going to keep all that in mind going forward. And we're most of the time going to let them come to us because moving up to engage them could expose us to additional enemies. In fact, it, like I said, if we had moved up to expose them, we probably would have been spotted by all the enemies up top. As such, we're only exposed to one, uh, one additional enemy. So for the moment, we I feel comfortable engaging in this, but it's a constantly developing situation. You need to have situational awareness. You need to be aware if an enemy suddenly comes up behind you. You need to be paying attention. This mini-map I changed recently. Um, by default, I believe the mini-map is dots. It's a lot easier to see the enemy indicators on that map. You'll see, if you look in the lower right here, you can see two flashing red dots on my mini-map. It's much harder on this solid mini-map to see that than it is on the dot mini-map. So I'm very bad at spotting additional enemies as they approach. It's something that gets me into trouble all the time. Pay attention to your surroundings. Keep your eyes on what's on screen. Pay attention. It'll save your life. So we're about ready to engage this guy in melee. We're going to let him finish approaching. And because we have the spear, we can make an attack over this tile. We can hit him right now. If we had a non-spear, uh, again, if we look at our weapon, it says... If we... My inner key is stuck. If we my enter key okay use the other enter key um it, this this can make reach weapons uh reach attacks if we did not have a reach attack weapon we would have to step into melee or wait until he came adjacent to us 
and then hit him. So there's two ways to attack in Cataclysm. Um, number one is by moving into an enemy. So if they're next to you and you press the movement key to try and occupy their square, you will automatically make a melee attack. Alternatively, if you're using a gun or ranged weapon, you would press the F key in order to enter firing mode. And with reach weapons, you also press the F key. So in order to hit this guy for more than a tile away, we have to press F. It will auto-target the nearest enemy in this situation. If you're using the uh, a firearm, I'm not sure how it determines what enemy. It seems like it's the closest enemy, but then there are times when it seems like it, it does not select the closest enemy, so I don't know how that works exactly. Um, but now we are in the targeting mode. We're targeting this enemy. It displays information about this enemy, and if we hit, I think, F again, we will make an attack, or we could hit Enter. And you'll see we heard the whiff sound. I don't know if you heard that. I tend to turn the sound very low because the sound pack is not perfect and it, some of the sounds are loud, some are not. But we had a whiff noise and here it says you swing wildly and miss. Now, there are a lot of reasons you can miss. Mostly it's torso encumbrance. You'll see we have a minus 26% chance to hit. It depends on the plus. Our, I wish my enter key would enter. Um... We have a plus to hit bonus on this, a plus one, so it helps mitigate some of that, but we're not great. Now, we could just bump this enemy, bump attack the enemy by walking into him repeatedly, but that's a melee attack. And like we discussed in our medication video, anytime we're in range like this, this enemy could grab us and bite us, which would give us a bite wound on one of our body parts. So instead, we're going to kite this enemy. Kiting is a term in video games. I first heard it in EverQuest. I'm not sure where it originated. This is where you will back up and allow an enemy to pursue you and make attacks as you move um, so that you're never really within range of them. And it's mostly doable with firearms and uh, like with ranged weapons or with the reach attack weapons. So we're going to run. And we never talked about movement modes. There are three movement modes in Cataclysm. There is a walk, there is a sprint, and there is a crouch. We toggle between these using the double quotes key, so shift, ast um, shift apostrophe. Um, it's the, the, the double quotes. It's the one you use for quoting people. And this will toggle your movement mode. Alternatively, you can set individual key binds for, say, crouching, if I could type. There's a button that lets you skip right to crouching if you want to bind that. They're all unbound initially. Only the movement key, change movement mode key is bound initially. So you would have to manually bind your own key binds. I never did. I prefer to toggle them. In this particular tile set, there's an indicator over our character based on our movement speed. You'll see there's a small man running above my head, crouching above my head, and then walking has no display at all. Additionally, you can see your movement mode in this area. Uh, it will say W if walking, R if running, and C if crouching. Walking, pretty self-explanatory. It's your default movement mode. It's normal. Sprinting is important in this game. Sprinting allows you to move about double the speed you would at walking, but it drains your stamina, okay? And again, stamina, very important resource. Crouching, I think, also affects your stamina more. It slows your movement considerably. Last I checked, it was four times slower than walking, but it obscures enemies from seeing you. Uh, and we'll talk about crouching later because I think it has some mechanics that are, are a little bit confusing, uh, or rather, it just needs more talking about, but we're going to be use sprinting. So we're going to zoom back out. And sprinting allows us to move at basically double speed. So if we were to just walk away from this enemy, our speed is currently 89. That's about as fast as he moves. So we would be able to make a little bit of distance. But every time we attacked, he'd be able to close ground with us again. We really don't want that. So we're going to sprint away from him, which will let us move more than he does. And we're going to back up. And we're just going to hit F again. And we're going to attack him. You'll see he moved again. We hit him that time for 18 damage. But our spike on a stick was damaged by that attack. Because it's flimsy. So now it actually deals reduced damage. This is why I don't like the initial spears in the game. Is because they're all extremely pathetic. And don't really last very long. So we're going to back up again. He's following with us. So we're going to back up until we have space between us. We're going to hit him again. We hit him for 14 damage. Somewhere a zombie is struggling to stand up. Probably that zombie far to the north. 
Um, and it looks like they're just backtracking through the fence, so they're likely to die over time. We're going to back up again, and we're going to hit him. We're going to miss, apparently. Back up. Hit him. Back up. I backed up too much. Hit him. You'll see also there's an HP pop-up. This is just showing their remaining health uh, when it pops up. So if we go to Shift V, you'll see he has two dots, which is the lowest his health can possibly be before he is dead. Um, and that's what pops up here is their remaining health. So we'll hit him, and you'll see he died. When he died, uh, he became a corpse, which generated loot, uh, which um, is is important to note that loot is not generated until an enemy is killed. So like we can't look at this guy and see what he's wearing. Um, it doesn't appear until they die. And again, this corpse has not been pulped, uh, which is, means that it can revive over time. So one of the first things you want to do generally when you kill an enemy is to smash the corpse. We're not going to do that. And the reason for that is because we're already draining stamina. So you'll see our stamina has been reduced between us running and the melee combat. We've lost about a bar and a half of stamina. So instead, I'm going to switch back to walking. And if I smash this corpse, it's going to prevent reviv... Oh my god, this word revivification but if we smash it it will take time to smash the corpse it will drain stamina to smash the corpse and it will afford that enemy a chance to to get closer to us while we're expending stamina so instead i'd rather engage this enemy first which will hopefully kill itself on the barbed wire it did not but it is heavily injured if we look now it's down to two bars of health so it should be pretty easy to kill Again, the feral runners are faster than the zombies. We're still faster than them when we sprint, but it's going to be a lot harder to stay away from this one. So we're going to let him come into range. We're going to hit the F key, and we're going to attack him. We missed. We're going to make sure we're sprinting. We're going to start backing up. And you'll see, because he's so fast, he was able to move into the tile next to us and make an attack in the same amount of time it took for us to take a swing at him. So he did hit us, but... Uh, and you'll see it says it bites our torso. This Mostly it hit our shirt. So if we look at our shirt, our shirt actually took damage because it absorbed some of that blow for us. And it reduced the amount of incoming damage that we took. So you'll see we did take damage. We're no longer at full health on our torso. Um, but we're okay. We're going to back up. And you'll hear in the background this sound of our heartbeat. This is one of the reasons, so if we never talked about sound packs. Sound packs are things that add sounds to Cataclysm. Uh, the easiest way to install them is using the uh, Cataclysm launcher. I never made a cut uh, a, a, a video for the launcher. Vormithrax has a good one. Just just go Google Vormithrax's launcher setup. Uh, but you can access, uh, it's in general at the bottom. There's a ch sound pack option. I use chest hole specifically for the sound that we're hearing right now. For me, it's very loud. I'm going to turn down my sound. Um, there's a heartbeat sound in the background. What that means is that our stamina is dropping. I really like this particular heartbeat sound in this sound pack. Most sound packs, like I think the one I used to use, it had like a breathing. It was like <sighs> in the background when your stamina was low. I found that really annoying because it was hard to hear. And my number one cue for, hey, my stamina is getting low, is the sound. I very rarely look at this bar. I go by the sound that I'm hearing. So I like this, the heartbeat in the background. It helps me to know when my stamina is draining. I also find it extremely annoying, so I totally get if you would not want to use this sound pack. But the, I use chest hole, and that's why I use chest hole. And then again, that's just an indicator, hey, your stamina is low. And then the lower it gets, the sound will change. It will be a more rapid heartbeat. So I really, really like this sound pack for that reason. So our stamina is getting low. He's hitting us occasionally, which is a problem. We're going to keep trying to kite him. And we're just going to, anytime we think he might get an extra move, we're going to back up even further. And we'll just try to kite him. And you'll see he's keeping up with us much, much better than the standard zombie was. And they have less HP. He got me. Let's just... Let's back up. Let's just keep cutting. My instinct is to just bump attack him to death. Our stamina is low to the point where we're in danger. Uh, so we're going to stop running. You'll see our stamina is down to two bars. This is really where I would like to stop 
um, expending stamina because it can be very dangerous to go below this. If we go all the way down, there is an effect called the winded effect that will reduce all of our stats and make us very, very slow. And we will very likely die if we get the winded effect. So we try to avoid that at all costs. One way, so we're in a safe position now. The enemies have not pursued us. They're all up here. It looks like maybe some of them, no, that's the old corpses. Uh, so they would be up here somewhere. We're out of sight. We're in a safe-ish place. There are no enemies nearby. We're going to rest and get our stamina back. We do this by hitting the vertical pipe key. This is over the backslash. We've talked about this before. And we'll go to wait a while. And we'll just wait until we catch our breath, which will restore our stamina. We finish re waiting and are refreshed. Now we can smash these corpses. Uh, ignore the pit bull mix. I think that is hostile. That is why it's, it's tracking. Hmm... I don't know if it's hostile or not. We're going to keep an eye on him. So we smash this corpse. We talked about smashing before. It's a lowercase s key. And by smashing, you'll see that red skull indicator is no longer there. What that means is that this corpse is now pulped or dissected, uh, or uh, dismembered rather. And this prevents that enemy from reviving over time. I'm not sure what exactly the window is for reviving. It's several hours, so we can take our time to smash these. And again, you'll see this reduces our stamina slightly. If we had multiple corpses on this pile, it would drain our stamina even more. Um, but since they were just singles, it's not a big deal. We are no longer seeing the enemies up here. What that most likely means, yeah, I was going to say, is that they're dead. Um, so they killed themselves on the barbed wire. Alternatively, since we haven't heard a gunshot in a while, it's possible they would have wandered back into town. Um, because they no longer heard a sound. They're not migrating this way anymore. But they've killed themselves uh, on the thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to push up. We're going to be careful going past the window, just in case there was something in there. And we're going to try to smash these other corpses. We're going to peek anytime we come to glass so we can get eyes on what we're looking at. Still not seeing any enemies. Just keep peeking. Stick to the building. We see a survivor zombie. Survivor zombies are pretty dangerous. We really don't want to go up there. <laughs> kind of want to stay away from it. They can have some good loot. Northwest, you hear... Universal curfew is in effect. Please return to your home. This unit is authorized to open fire. That's a robot. And it's a robot with a gun, which is scary. But it's most likely inside of the prison. Alternatively, it said northwest, so it could be up here. But it's most likely in the prison. In fact, we see these sound indicators that show... In fact, yes, it even says what we heard in that area. So this is inside the prison. This is not something to be concerned about. The survivor zombie does have good vision, but I think we can get up here and safely smash these. Uh, northwest and below, you hear user password unrecognized. That's another robot, probably. That is migrating north, so we don't need to worry about that. And so we've taken care of the zombies that are in this immediate area. We can search their bodies uh, by examining them the same way we did uh, to pick items up using the E key or the G key or whatever. Um, we, can, we can pick things up. And we're going to look at their loot. And this is something I do pretty much every time when I kill an enemy is to take a quick look over their loot. You'll see all of their clothing is listed in brown. This is because by default, um, corpses that... And, okay, zombies that die will drop filthy clothing. So brown represents filthy. You'll see they also have the filthy tag after their name. This is um, a mechanic in Cataclysm. When you find dirty clothing, you need to clean it first. Because if you wear this clothing, let's say we put on this trench coat. And then we get hit in a body part that has this covering it. There is a chance that it will embed filth in our wound, which will give us a deep bite wound. Which we talked about in our medication episode. So wearing filthy clothing is generally something you should avoid. If you took the squeamish trait at character generation, you can't wear filthy clothing at all. So I would avoid wearing filthy clothing unless you're really in an, an emergency situation. Everything that's not clothing will be normal. Um, so you'll see we have an MP3 player. MP3 player is a nice tool to have, so we'll pick that up. Uh, we'll talk about these as we use them, probably. We also have a plastic bag full of popcorn. We'll take that, uh, as well as some cigarettes. We'll take those as well. And then we have a flyer and a pulped corpse, which we don't care about. So let's check the other body has a cell phone, which is not super valuable. We could take the battery out of it. You'll see it's a high capacity battery. Currently it has zero charge, but we could unload the battery just to have, uh, so we could recharge it later. 
It is a handheld game system. This has a disposable battery in it. And I know that because there's 300 uh, disposable batteries have more charge. So batteries are broken down into size. So even though both of these contain light batteries, the disposable has 300. The um, high capacity has 150 and a normal battery would have 100. So we definitely want this because this is a full battery that we could use for our tools. So we'll unload the battery from that. Then it has some chewing gum, Necco wafers, electronic cigarette. We'll take the electronic cigarette just because it can uh, up. It's like a fun item to use, so it can be something to improve our mood later. The Necco wafers, I guess we'll take. Uh, normally, I wouldn't take because they're just junk food, but we'll take them. Chewing gum also has a very small uh, enjoyability bonus, so you could take that. What we're gonna do is unload the batteries. We do this by hitting capital U uh, for unload and it will prompt us what we want to unload. And we'll unload the handheld battery and the cell phone battery. And we'll take those with us. We're hearing more sounds from inside the base, but it's not concerning. The survivor zombies, there are two of them, uh, which means there's probably a house up there that spawns survivor zombies because they're pretty rare in the early game, um, but they are pretty dangerous because they have pretty decent armor. Um, they're pretty quick etc. They can also have some good loot on them, so it's usually a good thing to kill. But we don't have a gun, and we really don't want to fight them in melee. What is the real problem is that that means we're not going to be able to push up to loot and smash these corpses, so these guys will probably revive over time unless we're able to get up there safely. But both of them, especially if they came at us together, very dangerous. We really don't want to deal with them. Additionally, um, the zombies' names are color-coded, so the redder, the more red a name is, the more dangerous that creature is in general. That's a rule of thumb that is not always correct, um, but it's generally pretty accurate. So if you see a dark red name, you probably don't want to deal with that, especially if you're in the early game. So we'll smash this other corpse. Really nothing on it but clothing and the corpse. We don't want that. And we'll check the ones we killed as well. Still see that pit bull mix I'm a little concerned about. Once again, just clothing. Nothing really jumping out at me as stuff we want. You'll see all the clothing is also damaged. This indicates uh, how much health this item has. The more damaged the clothing item is, the less its protection is. So we generally, it should say that somewhere. Uh, protection values are reduced by damage and you can improve them by repairing this item. So we really don't want any of this stuff. Uh, and then we'll check the last one. Again, not really anything that we want on it. So we've cleared out the area and now we can safely loot this house um, because we know that this area is mostly clear. We've checked the front and we can see that there's nothing in sight. Uh, there are no monsters around here. Um, so we can pretty safely uh, assume that we can go in this building. There could be more zombies in here, but because we were fighting right outside, they would most likely have come out to investigate the sounds of combat. So it's reasonably safe for us to assume that this is a, a good place to loot. So I think we'll call the episode there. We, we dealt with our first combat encounter. We took a little bit of damage. Um, it's important to assess damage after a combat encounter. You'll see we're still in minimal pain. Uh, normally, if we had not been in pain at the start of the encounter, we probably would have gone up to minimal. But because we were already in pain and we took some painkillers, we're, we're pretty much where we were before. Um, and you'll see our thirst has now progressed to very thirsty, which is problematic because it's reducing our speed, um, as, is, as is pain. Both of these are reducing our speed, which makes us a little less capable in combat. So, um, yeah. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll be back with more of the Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tutorial series in the near future, and I'll see you next time.